Samsung has finally pushed out its massive new one user interface update to my unlocked Galaxy S9 Plus, and it is an absolute doozy of an update. Coming in at almost two gigabytes, the One UI on top of Android 9.0 Pi brings a ton of new features and a completely new look and feel. I took a scrolling screenshot to capture the entire change log, and it seems like it goes on forever. There's a lot to take a look at, so let's get started. Right off the bat, you're going to notice the new look. The lock screen widget and the always on display widget have been cleaned up a bit and there are some new icons in each corner for the camera and the phone shortcuts. In addition to the new clock widgets for the always on display, what is also kind of neat is you can now see when the phone is charging via the always on display. That uh, this seemingly simple new feature wasn't available in the past. Now it's kind of neat if you have your phone sitting on a desk or a nightstand, you can see if it's charging or not. You'll see that these stock icons are different. They are flatter, more consistently round in shape. The color palette is more modern and everything seems a little bit bigger and magnified. Many of Samsung's stock applications have been updated with a new design, one that makes it much easier to navigate with one hand, even if the display of your phone is massive. Samsung accomplishes this by using big headers that push everything down, and they have relocated a lot of the menus to the bottom of the display instead of at the top. Overall, I like what Samsung is doing with their stock apps. I think they work, it looks clean, but more importantly, it makes using the phone easier. We'll see a similar design with the notification panel and quick settings where the icons appear much larger, uh, much flatter and simpler in appearance. When you expand the quick settings, you'll see they get shifted much further down on the screen and the brightness toggle is on the very bottom of the screen, which is way easier to reach with your finger. Going into the settings, you'll see a similar story where the settings header is massive and it takes up almost half the screen. It looks a little bit weird, but there's a reason for it. The icons next to each settings topic are small, they're flat, they're simple. Uh, one thing I noticed is that there are no additional drop-down menus inside of each subcategory. Just to give you an example, like stock Android tries to simplify each setting by only surfacing the most popular settings, forcing you to expand the settings drawer even more to reveal more options. I kind of like how Samsung doesn't keep with that layout as you can get all the settings options without having to tap the screen again and search for things. Samsung even recommends settings for you if you can't find what you're looking for. Now, one of the biggest new features of One UI is Samsung's new system-wide night mode that basically turns the entire S9 Plus dark. The settings are dark, the notification panel is dark, the phone dialer is dark. All Samsung apps work with this mode, which is awesome. It should be easier on the eyes and it should help save battery life as Samsung uses OLED panels that do not brighten up black pixels, they are turned off, so no power is being used. We also have gestures for navigation, which can be activated via the quick settings here. It's gonna be similar to the gesture-based navigation controls we've seen in stock Android 9.0 Pi, and even the iPhone 10 and iOS, where you swipe up from the bottom center of the screen to go home, you swipe up from the bottom left to go back in an application, and you swipe up from the bottom right to open up the overview multitasking tray, which as you can see now is flowing from right to left as opposed to from bottom to top. This mode, should you choose to enable it, will maximize your screen real estate. What is kind of disappointing though is that you do not have that quick double press option to quickly switch between two applications. So I might actually be switching back to the uh, software-based navigation buttons. And to multitask, you now have to tap the top of the application in the overview tray and then tap on open in split screen view. You no longer just long press on the entire card itself and drag it to the top of the display. For better or for worse, it's just different. The emojis have been updated with a fresh new look, but that's just a change made in Android Pie that was infused with the One UI update. There is a device care setting now available that has been seriously cleaned up, but it's uh, just about the same setting as device maintenance that was in the previous software. The name change and the new look are really all that's new about this setting, but hey, I'll take it. It looks and it sounds better in my opinion. 
The camera app has been refined. So the settings have been moved to the left-hand side of the app and we'll see Samsung's bubble-based design elements here in the settings of the camera app. There's a dedicated video mode now, which I really enjoy as you can frame the shot before pressing record. Previously, you had this separate video recording button that was next to the camera shutter button. It was a little bit weird. And we'll see that the main camera modes have been shifted down toward the bottom of the screen, making it much easier to press with one hand. A neat hidden trick is you can press and drag the shutter button anywhere on the viewfinder to make it easier to take a photo depending on your environment. We'll also see there are different aspect ratios to choose from up top and other settings like a timer and a flash. Gesture-based swipe controls are available too, like before, so you can swipe left and right to toggle between different camera modes, and you can swipe up and down to switch between the front and rear-facing camera sensors. There is a new lift-to-wake feature that mirrors the raise-to-wake feature in iOS. Basically how it works is if you have your phone lying down on a flat surface and you pick it up, it'll light up the display and it will show you your notifications. It's that simple. I think some of you are really gonna like this feature and others are gonna hate it and just leave it off by default. Also, apparently in the phone dialer app, the phone will save up to 2000 calls in the recent section, uh, which is up from the 500 limit with Samsung's older software. So if you make a lot of calls, this might be useful to you. I know I sure won't be taking advantage of this feature. Now I haven't used this phone long enough to really get a feel for the battery life and whether it's been seriously affected with the One UI update. Some people say their battery life has tanked after updating their phone. Others say it's about the same. I just haven't noticed any serious battery issues in my 24 hours of usage, but I guess only time will tell. I have heard though that standby time has been improved, so you might actually find your phone lasting a bit longer after updating. The performance seems similar, but the animations seem smoother and more fluid than before, which kind of gives off the impression that the phone is faster, even though it's just the animation speed that's been tweaked. But you were technically always able to tweak the animation speed in the developer options. So nothing is terribly new here. Overall, I am very happy with the performance here. In my opinion, if you're on the fence about updating, I'd say go for it. There are some tweaks that I don't like, such as the multitasking tray that flows from right to left. But there are some other features that easily make up for that, like the excellent dark mode and the gesture-based navigation controls that free up more screen real estate. Also, since Samsung has included a security patch with this update, you really should update your phone so that it's as secure as possible. Let me know your thoughts on Samsung's new One UI software. What do you like? What do you dislike about it? Let us know in a comment down below. As always, I'm Bo HD from PhoneDog.com. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you right back here in the next one. See ya.